Today's problem has both service container and as we all know, service container is responsible for dependency injection. So in this video, I'm going to discuss this in detail. For instance, here we have object from our request class and we can print uh, its uh, full URL like this. But what if we need to declare our uh, test class? So here we have test class. And we can take object from this test class. And now we can print this object. And it looks fine. But what if this test class requires a, requires a parameter for its uh, constructor? Like this. And let's say we have message param. Say we have a message parameter and we need uh, this parameter. And so again, here, here we have required missing parameter. So we need to use our service container to bind this class to our container and to declare what's exactly it's going to happen when we initiate a new object from uh, this class. So we could do this by uh, using our app find and declare our class name and our closure function and the function that tell service container what to do when you initiate this class. So I'm going to say that return new test with this uh, message test message and now if we try again it works fine and here our message and it could be more complicated uh, than that because um, maybe this class requires another object from another class so like this class message and this class could also requires uh, an parameter for its constructor. So here we could take object from uh, this message. So in this case, it could be a very complicated would be a very time and ever consuming process because in this case we need to uh, initialize uh, we need to pass all parameters for all constructors could be like this So service container saves us a lot of time and efforts, and we were gonna uh, we were gonna discuss service container again uh, when we when we're talking about service provider.